So the word birth, happy birth. So the word birth falls on our first strong beat. Which note is that in C major if our melody begins 5-5-6-5? Five, 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 what note are we playing on the strong beat? Happy birth. Uh, six. Which is what note in C major? B. Never guess when you can count. If you know, you know. If you don't know, you count. A. A. Good. An A. So A is the major sixth of the C major scale, a major sixth from the fundamental tonic. But the sixth degree also has a name, which speaks to other ideas, and that is the submedian. We've already seen a scale degree with sub in it. Do you remember which one that was? Subdominant? Subdominant, which was the fourth degree, the degree below the dominant, but that wasn't the most interesting explanation we found about why we might call it subdominant. Do you remember? Why is the subdominant important? The subdominant is important because... Uh, I can't remember what the subdominant was. So if it's a dominant, what, what relationship is important for this, for this degree? The fifth. Right. But what does it make a fifth with? It's not with the first degree, that's what the dominant does. What is the subdominant of C major? How do I find the subdominant? It's the fourth degree, no? The one just below the dominant. F. F. What is a perfect fifth from F? From F. Uh, C. C. So we noted that the subdominant has the same relationship, a perfect fifth, to the second tonic, to the eighth scale degree, that the dominant has from the first tonic. So the subdominant was the dominant below the tonic. The dominant is a perfect fifth up from the tonic, so C to G in C major. The subdominant is a perfect fifth up to the tonic from F to C in C major. So if the subdominant is the dominant below the tonic, the submedian then, the sixth degree, is the median below the tonic. What interval do we have from the tonic to the median, from the first to the third degree? What interval do we have there? Three, the third. A third, of course, major or minor, depending on the scale. So the median is a third from the tonic. And we should also have a third again from the submedian to the tonic. Do we? From A to C, from the sixth to eighth degrees of C major, do we have a third again? Yeah. Yeah, we do, of course. So how many half steps does a major third have? If you don't know, just find one and count it. Just find the major third and count the half steps. Right, so this, hold on, because I saw your face there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you're overwhelmed with, there's a lot of calculation here, what you need to do is say, what is the first thought? What is the first thought? So if I'm asking you to find how many half steps we have in a major third, the first thought is to find a major third that you're sure of. So like if I go from A to C? That you're sure of. So A to C is actually a minor third. So if you want to be sure, we're in C major now, no? So find the median of C major, that will be a major third. Right, so I'll start in C, so the major third will be E. Brilliant. And now count the half steps there for me. So you go C to D, because there's no, no, no. C, C sharp, uh, C sharp, D, D to D sharp, D sharp to E. So four. Four. So a major third has four half steps and a minor third has three. The perfect fifth is the combination of both of these. And how many half steps does it have, the perfect fifth? If it's the combination of the major minor third? So seven. Seven. So if we split an octave in half, we get two perfect intervals. No, we get a perfect fifth and then a perfect fourth. Both are dominants, the dominant and the subdominant. If we split the dominant in half, a perfect fifth interval, we get a median and a submedian. And these aren't perfect intervals now, but rather major or minor. If we play the dominant interval of any key plus the median interval what do we get now? 
but you're playing, you, you're playing a chord. A major or minor chord, of course. So a major or minor chord is just the space of half the octave plus half of that half, or a quarter, no? Or at least we are playing with representations of that. The representations of the quarter of the octave are not perfect like the very structural halves, but are of course major or minor, bigger or smaller in Latin, rather than just as is, perfect, by fact, as made. Made and fact are the same word in Latin. So our quarters aren't set in quality like our perfect halves are. They are flexible. They are bigger or smaller, major or minor. And whilst it's the median quarter which defines whether our keys or chords are major or minor, we did split the perfect fifth in two, giving us two quarter octaves. And it's the other quarter that the submedian represents. Being the other half of the perfect fifth, the submedian interval alludes to opposing qualities to the median. If the median of a major key gives us a major third with four half steps, the submedian of the same major key gives us a minor third with three half steps, and vice versa for minor keys. Together, the two medians, the median and the submedian, always complete the seven half steps of the perfect fifth. This makes the median and submedian a perfect team, pun intended. The median defines and affirms the quality of the scale, and the submedian throws in some counter vibes. When it comes to intervals and how they interplay, what counts for chords counts for melodies. They are the same counts after all. So we can look out for medians and submedians in music we hear and observe how they function and interact, both in terms of chord and melody. As for the melody of Happy Birthday, the submedian A here in C major of course creates a minor third with the second tonic, which we'll soon play, no? 556588. Five, Seven. But how much and how exactly we feel those minor vibes depends on other musical elements interacting with it. The minor submediant relationship is not the only thing playing out. For one, we have a C major chord coming in here with the submediant at the same time as the submediant. And furthermore, other than just a scale degree, the A is also a note with a melodic context. It is interacting rhythmically as well as tonally with the preceding notes, the two Gs we just played. What interval is this from G to A? A second. A second. The A generates a major second, two half steps, from the G we've just heard. And so these major sensations from the key, the chord, the major second interval here, all interact with that hint of minor flavour the submedian brings to the table. As do elements of time. The submedian falls on a strong beat, and the submedian note lasts the combined time of the first two notes, one whole beat. All of that, together and interdependently, is translating into musical sensation. The first three notes of Happy Birthday then, with their expectant dominant tension preceding the strong beat, and then a mixture of major and minor vibes with our submedian and major second plus our major chord already begin to reflect the unspoken complex undertones that the celebration of growing older might entail for us. Happy birthday is a celebration, but a measured one. After all, we do like to take for granted that we'll all live to see another day. At the same time, each milestone we pass and acknowledge in life, the closer we get to our uncertain final destination. So this celebration isn't a boisterous and cocky one like the triumph of a won battle, but the more gracious, grateful yet subtle, appreciative triumph of persisting in life. A persistence we would maybe prefer to take for granted. So let's not rejoice too sincerely.